Ah, uh, maps. Those wondrous places where you go to chuck a plated sandwich at someone's face because they demanded it, play in leagues, buddy up with that crazy man with a plan, and establish genocide on complete strangers. Maps are the lifeblood and soul and very backbone of TF2 and first-person shooters alike. The, ble the bread for our glorious domination sandwich filler that tastes of salty tears of your victims from your W1 pyros and elations of joy from that one giver sniper who somehow cheesed his way to victory. But with these considered, I've never really seen a top 10 dedicated to maps in TF2. Maybe even the worst, but certainly not the best. But today I hope to shed light on this subject. Disclaimer, this is not a gospel fact list, this is just one man's opinion, it's my list, so it's my favourites, so if you're not happy with one of your favourites not being on, the per on my personal list, you can post your top 10 in the comments. Failing that, if you just want to be a condescending asshole because someone has a different taste than you, then please look up an image of Toriano shrugging to express how many fucks I give. And one more caveat, some of these take place in empty servers or bot servers, mainly because I just couldn't be asked to spend all that time trying to search for all these maps and spending ages getting redirected to the wrong ones. But with that being said, what is up everybody? The name's Captain and Zeno Esquire, and these are the top 10 Team Fortress 2 maps of all time. Number 10, Turbine. Yes, I know people hate this map because it's a nightmarish basic bitch of a match to some. But to others, not so much. For me, what sells it is not the most nightmarish spawn camping and a million and one century nest, which in truth docked a few points off for this map. What really excites me is the middle area. The mid of Turbine can provide some very exciting action with accessible sniper decks to on either side, bullets and arrows can fly, there's enough open spaces for scouts to do their thing, and just enough cover for some sight lines to make sure you aren't taking a full crit headshot to the face. One of the more curious tidbits on this map is the big containers right in the centre of battle, which are useful for many classes. For an engineer with a well-coordinated team, they can set up a telly and a sentry to try and shut the other team down. Spies can use it to their advantage, um, to backstab and means as an escape. Soldiers can use it to gain the high ground in a soldier v soldier fight. The middle is great for chaos. And speaking of chaos, number 9, it's two fort. Man, what hasn't been said about one of the longest running maps in the game? One of the first six maps of the game, if you want unbridled chaos, then 2-4 is the place for you. Sniper wars across the battlements, sentry nests in the intel room, and trying to gain the high ground for an advantage in the courtyard. Despite not being one of the best maps out there, 2-4 shows what it can offer to the table. And what it can offer is a crazy time for all involved. And that's why it makes number 9 on my list. Group Keep is at number 8. Yeah, because of that, trimping is fun. A modern version of the classic well map with fights all over the shop. This variant is the one that I love more than the original, with the train section being more refined and definitely more of a focus for danger in those mid fights than ever before being careful not to be flattened when carrying the intelligence back. Whilst that is one of the only real aesthetic changes in the map, in my opinion, I believe this map is much better for a CTF setting without falling into too many of the pratfalls that other CTF maps do. Sadly, however, this map variant has been taken out of casual rotation, so unless you find a community server giving this a run, you may not see it ever again. In at number 6, it's Viaduct. Whilst everyone praises the pro version of this map, which is very nice, I'll admit, I'll go for the original Viaduct. Overall, the design of the map is fantastic in my opinion. Interesting sniper sightlines, but a higher mid to stop said snipers seeing all the way across the map. The buildings in the middle provide great cover and escape from many of the other classes. And most of the mid areas make sure sentries are really hard to keep active unless you have a good team backing you up. It's great for fights, and the perfect backdrop for chaos. The winter variant and the Forta trains rushing overhead as you tussle for the point with your adversaries in the winter provides a beautiful scene for a great time. In at number 5 is Hydro. Now wait, before you stick a pitchfork in me and mount me in your front garden as a warning to other blasphemers, let me explain. 
I think design wise this map is one of the greatest design for the game itself with control points on each six areas being just as challenging as the ones previous. The aesthetics of the dam and warehouse sections are some of the most beautifully designed areas in the game itself. The map has loads of potential. But sadly, what lets it down is the match type it was built for. Territorial control is not one of the more finer match types, much like the old arena mode that was almost doesn't exist anymore. So this map will always remain empty and unplayed. Which is a big shame. Rest in peace, Hydro. Hydro the unloved, Hydro the beautiful. Rushing into cap at number 4 is Cough King. What can I say? I'm a sucker for well-designed city-based maps. This Chinatown war zone is great with many high areas around mid to try and maintain the advantage as you push to win back that point the blue so dastardly stole. Ya bastards! On either sides of the points are stairs to really put the enemies backs up against it as they don't know if you'll be coming in straight at them or from right underneath them or flying straight behind them. In my opinion, one of the most balanced King of the Hill maps in the game. It looks amazing and you'll always be in for a great time. Guaranteed. Rocket jumping into the number 3 slot is CP Granary. My personal favourite map of the original 6, CP Granary offers a lot of chaos and fun with its points, with the last having long sightlines for Sniper, but plenty of cover to duck and weave towards them and around them. The penultimate points for both teams can be very choke point heavy. Bear in mind, this was back in the days when the game was heavily reliant on uber charges to get through a tight situation. But there are plenty of ways to get around and work together with your team for the win. And the mid has to be one of the most well thought out areas in most maps I've seen. It's enclosed but without the feeling of, without the feeling of being trapped. There's enough space for everyone to do their thing. Sniper decks are plenty, and containers for soldiers to gain the high ground and rain down upon his enemies to buy time for his team to respawn. If you're looking for a blast from the past, then CP Granary is the place you'll want to go to to kick some ass. In at number 2 is Upward. The only payload map to make this list, Upward is another one of those maps that has been wonderfully designed. Each point to cap the cart with more challenge than the last one that preceded it. Whilst the second point is rightfully criticised for being Sentry Central, the rest of the map is great for uh, many other classes to do their thing. It's great for both offence and defensive, where you will never really know which way the game is going to go, and that it won't be nightmarish to defend or attack. Pyros, Scouts, Demo and Medic all shine particularly well on this map, especially Engineers. But my opinion is that Upward is the soldier's playground. It's the perfect map to learn to be a soldier or kicking ass and taking names. And for those who want to know, my personal favourite point is the penultimate one where you're going over the bridge. A greatly designed map, but it doesn't take the top spot. That belongs to... Number 1, Mountain Lab. Yep, that might be a bit confusing to some, but for me, there's just nothing better in terms of design. I really, really love this map. Its design is beautifully made, and it forces the teams to work together. The control points take a while to cap, especially the first point, giving the team ample time to recover and try and get them pesky blues off, or for the blues to rally together and try and capture the point working as a team. For me, that's exactly what Team Fortress 2 is all about. Getting your team to work together to kick some ass. There's brilliant sightlines and also very balanced for almost every class and great flank routes for the enemy unaware. So for me, this is my number one favourite map, which could be a little bit biased because of sentimental value. Well, the first official Team Fortress 2 match I ever played was on Mountain Lab, where I picked up quite a few wins, despite being really shit. But that is my number one map. What do you guys think? Do you think um, there's some that should have gone on this list? Or do you think you got a better list? Or do you generally agree with some? Let me know in the comments below. That being said, I'm Captain Insano Esquire. That was the top 10 Team Fortress 2 maps, in my opinion, of all time. I'll see you next time. Fare thee well.